Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today I'm gonna to be talking about an opinion video. And in these opinion videos, I share a piece of my mind and I would like to see what you guys think. And this is about the idea that there's a film camera bubble in, in regards to the pricing. And by this, I mean that there's a fake pricing demand or like, like inflation, like basically people have hiked the prices and it's actually not real, that it should be much cheaper, that it's gonna burst at some point, uh, when is it gonna burst, how much is it gonna burst and so on. And we're in 2023, we're in the middle of basically a very weird economic situation and there's so many different uh, factors to count into this. But I, I like looking backwards because I'm an old timer in film photography. I was around when film photography was the only thing that was around. There was no digital photography, no phone photography, no nothing of that. It was just film and labs everywhere, mini labs, one hour labs, all of that. And back then, film photography had like uh, basically like, like a hierarchy of acquisitions. So I can't say the words, but there was like a society, like high society, low society, middle society, low income, middle income, you know what I mean, there's different levels. And for that, it was very simple. It was basically, there was budget cameras that were for people that couldn't afford a film camera, basically. It was very hard to get. And you had like point and shoots and you had cheap SLRs and you had things like this. And then you would go to the people that had a bit more money, maybe a prosumer, consumer that would buy an SLR, maybe something a little nicer in the regards of like a Nikon F80, uh, stuff like this. And those people would be a zoom, maybe a couple lenses. That's about it, maybe a prime. And then we had the pro prosumer that were people that were like hardcore buying something cool because they had the money and they're, they're buying maybe a Hasselblad because they thought it was super cool and they were spending all that money. And then we had pros. And in the pro segment, we had people shooting for a living. They are paying their salary, their money, their food, their rent, their everything from photography. And these people mostly were either photojournalists shooting like Canon 1Vs, 1Ns, F1s, you know, this kind of stuff. 35 mil that had to do photo uh, journalism very fast or studio photography or large format photography. They were doing catalogs, they were doing slides, they were shooting campaigns for Vogue and magazines, so on. The thing is when that died, when digital came and killed it, everybody didn't adopt digital immediately. So first the professionals did. Why? Because professionals buy a piece of equipment and they basically use it and like count it as an expense monthly on their uh, in their you know budget to basically pay it off and then be like it's done I need to buy the new expense SIF camera and keep on shooting making a living the moment digital came in they were some early adopters that were being buying digital stuff because suddenly there was no developing cost no film cost it was just editing and stuff on the computer and all this <clears throat> and those people dumped the market and like basically like it was like a like a, how do you say like a dam that broke with all this high, high end gear sold for pennies. Why pennies? Because they had already paid it from their jobs. They were not losing most times a lot of money. It was already being paid by multiple jobs done. Um, and that's where me and others that were hobbyists, but from back in the day, saw Hasselblad's for a fraction of a price. And we're talking $600, $500 for a full Hasselblad, Mamiya RBs and RZs for a couple hundred at the most. You almost could get them for free if you went to talk to the photographer and told them how you were super hardcore into film. They would basically leave it to you for free or maybe give you another body for free, something like that. And that's the first people that implemented it. But this excessive amount of uh, supply of cameras dropped the price dramatically. Plus they were pros, like I said, and they didn't need that much money for that because they were buying digital stuff that they would pay off eventually or theoretically. Digital kind of had a weird beginnings. And then we went to the next level. People started selling that were convinced there was a bit more market of digital. You know, it was getting mature in the digital and then people started dumping prosumer cameras, consumer cameras, and still to this day, you can buy consumer cameras from people that don't know that they have value and have already transferred to phone photography. But I always like to think like the bubble is not so much a bubble. It just kind of like died and then went back. And how did it go back? It went back because first it was so cheap that everybody that would like film photography could buy anything. I ended up having 10 Hasselblads, five Mamiya RZ67s, a bunch of large format stuff, 35 Raleigh flexes, you name it, I've had it. 
Pentax 6x7s. I mean, my first Pentax 6x7, I paid 250 with a 105, with a grip, with the TTL, everything. And it was the MLU, I think it was the 6.7 even. It was so cheap. So we all hoarded it and bought it all. I came with seven pallets of cameras here to Finland. But after that started getting like that, we started spreading the word, you know, on forums, on the internet, on YouTube, on whatever. Film is amazing. Film photography is not dead. Film photography uh, is not dead, but smells funny. There was all these hashtags, Flickr, all that. And that created people being more interested slowly in the new generations that were born without film, being more interested. And there's more demand, but there's no supply understand there's no supply because there's no new cameras the market died yes Leica continued and a couple continued but it basically died you couldn't go to a camera store and buy a new camera it was just not a thing in 2007 2008 2009 2005 nothing there was almost nothing there so it kept on growing prices go up because there's not so much and then it keeps on going up and it keeps on going up and it keeps on going up and now it's 2023 and we're seeing house of butts at four thousand dollars we're seeing rolly flexes at three four thousand dollars and i'm talking things that are minty and refurbished or cla or with warranty obviously you can go and buy it from a garage sale for a couple hundred and probably get a deal and most probably is broken and needs a service but you know it's a good deal but like the prices are going back to what they were in a way but there's no demand i mean sorry there's no supply so that's where it gets interesting is where will it continue to go? And people like me have bought everything they wanted, actually sold almost everything they didn't need, and now are choosing the one, two, three, four cameras that they're like, these are the ones I really want to continue. I actually have my Chamonix 8x10 here, which is the one I've chosen to keep, uh, and move on. The thing is, the new people are coming in, they're buying all the cameras, they want point and shoots, they want things like this, but they are not going to be able to afford the highest end, okay? We're going back to where the dentists or the lawyers or the engineers will have the Hasselblads and the Roliflexes and the Leicas. And if you're a bartender or a factory operator like I was a couple of years ago, you won't be able to buy that kind of stuff unless obviously you save a lot of money or you have money from the get-go. And we won't be aiming to have a Hasselblad. We will be aiming to have a Bronica. We'll be aiming to have a Yashica and stuff like that. And it's interesting because I think the prices have gone up to a level where it's strange. It's a strange moment because some manufacturers are noticing it and starting to maybe think about making more. We have Leica with the announcement of the Leica M6, new edition 2022. We have Pentax saying they have a roadmap to build new cameras for film photography. We have like more spare parts. It's starting to be more economical to actually think about repairing cameras. It used to be like just grab a piece and, you know, dump the other one or dump them for parts or whatever it was. But now it's getting to that weird point. And as prices are starting to be at different levels, and it used to be very low, now we're going to high to low. And you still can buy a Minolta Dynax 5 for like 20 bucks with a lens and shoot. That's not a problem. Thankfully, there's thousands and hundreds of thousands of cameras out there, millions probably. But the interesting thing is like, will it drop? And I think the higher end gear will slightly drop. And this is because if you think about it, not long ago, we had YouTubers like Willem making videos about the RZ67 and how much he was shooting. Then he made a video that three of his cameras were broken and he was going to send it to service. And these cameras went up on price and suddenly people can't afford them. They're too expensive. They're going for the RB67 and then those go up. But those are going to slightly level off. And unless we have a new player in the market, will continue to rise as there's less of them in the market less of them that are repaired, less of them that can be repaired even because they've been shot dry and they just lose all the, it's a mess inside. I'll show you one day if you want to see how they get inside if they're dirty and shot dry, especially the RBs and stuff like that. But yeah, like where it will, like it will level and the rest of the bottom will continue to go up because there'll be more people looking for the cheaper entry level. And that's where we either get a new camera or something in there or we might lose film photography for, not for good, but like we'll lose a big chunk of it because that inertia. And it's funny, one of the things that I notice is the new people that want to shoot film want no complications. They don't want problems with the camera not working, the batteries being hard to find. So that's why Kodak and some of these brands that are making these disposable, reusable cameras, which is what I call them, but they're basically like cheap plastic lens, one shutter speed, that's it. You load a, film, a roll of film, you shoot, one double A for a flash. If you notice it, if you go ahead and you find that Kodak double frame picture uh, camera, the, the half frame camera, 
it's the most viewed video in most YouTube channels. I've seen channels with half a million views on this camera that's 29, 39 bucks because it's simple, you can buy it new, and it's reliable in its simplicity, okay? And that's where I think the bubble that we have for prices is not gonna burst. Like I said, it's gonna mellow on the high end, but it's gonna continue pushing from the low end. And we're gonna either get new cameras, like with the ones we're getting, hopefully better than that, and then that will level out. But there always be like that, like that levels of cameras. And what we have to think is that those prices of 800 euro or 800 dollar Hasselblads or Roliflexes is probably never going to be seen again unless a major event happens. And what I mean by major event, and this is something I hope doesn't happen, I'm touching wood, my stool is wood, is Kodak, for example, going bankrupt. Again, completely bankrupt. We forget, we lose color photography with Kodak. That would make everything drop again to like 2005, 2006. And then we would probably start climbing up with, you know, fine art photography and black and white photography and stuff like that. And it would slowly dwindle up. But I hope that that doesn't happen because the industry needs to continue growing and it needs funding and it needs new people and needs more interest. But yeah, I would love to hear, like, when did you get into film photography? What prices were you paying for the gear you got? Are you happy with what you got? And why do you think you need more cameras which is what i always end up feeling like but yeah this is an opinion video thanks for watching guys uh i'll leave my link for support if you feel like seeing more of this stuff there's a patreon and paypal donations you decide if you want to do something i've changed my whole paypal i mean my patreon thing it's it's a work in progress but yeah you'll see that there thanks for watching see you in the next one bye